All right. Good evening and welcome. I'd like, to, first of all, to introduce you to our committee members, and we have little tags on so you can see our town logo. And we do that specifically so that if you have any questions, if you are interested in joining our committee, if you would like to know more about our projects, we would be more than happy to answer that for you. We have a little, uh, some soft light refreshments afterwards, and we'll be around. So if you'd like to stop and chat with any one of us, we would be more than happy to do that. But this evening is all about you. We are so happy that you are here to celebrate our 21st annual Curbabeal celebration because you make a difference. <laughs> we are recognizing your efforts in hopes that your neighbors and anyone walking or driving past your home will identify with you and want to do the same thing. And we hope that you in the future will do the same thing. So if you're walking around or driving, you too identify a home and then let us know and next year nominate someone. So right now I'd like to introduce our committee, my co-chair, Donna Caserta. <laughs> Laura, Laura Danko. Jen Riley Young, <laughs> Patricia Ritchie, Rita Sakia, our techie, and Janice Cuppy. All right, one sit down and we'll get started. We are most thrilled this evening to have our mayor, Laura Hoydick, with us, and I'd like you to come up to the podium. She will be handing out all of the awards this evening, so you're very fortunate. Laura? Thank you, Christine. And I can say thank you, ladies, for all your hard work and improving Stratford by making a positive impact on all the things that are beautiful here. They're my um, little angels in disguise. Sometimes I get a tap on the shoulder or an email or a, hey, Mary, you better look at this because it doesn't look so good. And then we, uh, we rally, and we improve, and we make our town more beautiful. But this positive activity and this positiveness about Stratford is pervasive. It's spreading. Not only do we look good, but we're acting good, and we're very happy to be here. And we're, and we're just very fortunate to have these women who are making us more beautiful than we already are. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. So this, this evening, when, you come, when we're finished talking about your particular property, when you come up, we will hand you an award. We will also give you a little Dutch house that's filled with a new bulb that we're planting called the Marike Daffodil, and it's much hardier. And we hope that when you take it home, you add to your wonderful curb appeal, and you take that bulb, and remember, it's always two and a half times the size of the bulb when you plant it. And hopefully you'll do it in mid-October, if you have that chance. We want the ground to be a lot cooler than it is now. We also ask, if you, once you take your award and the house, you also take your sign. You put it together as you see standings, and we thought, should you have an emergency, you need to leave, or whatever, you have commitments, you're all set. Oftentimes, we're trying to find you so you get your sign. But the most important thing is we hope that you're proud of what you've accomplished, that you add it to your front lawn, and that your neighbors get to see it and you celebrate it. Front window, we hope you do it. It's wonderful. As you know, the daffodil is our town flower. And we work very hard for all the entrances and gateways into our town to celebrate that in March when you see a sea of yellow. And I hope that you help us with that. This is our next project. We give away bulbs, and we do that at the Baldwin Center, at the library, at Town Hall, at the mayor's office, at Sterling House, and also at the council clerk's office. They're just little bags like this. They're free, but we hope you support us with uh, planting in your front yards and continue the process so we really become beautiful in March when the grass isn't growing. Today, I'd like to recognize Public Works. 
One of the things that I'm interested in are all the businesses and public buildings in town. And what we do is take time throughout the whole year to see if they maintain their property, if they add seasonal touches to their homes, to the businesses, then we celebrate that. So the first one we'd like to recognize is our public works. They were nominated by um, someone who is here with us this evening, and you might know the people who nominated you. You might not. If you're interested, you can always ask someone with that you just met with our little tags on, and we can help you with that. But uh, today, we're nominate, uh, Public Works was nominated, and we'd like to just talk a little bit of their accomplishments as far as Paradise Green is concerned with the gazebo, with the knockout roses that you see, the pink and white petunias that you see in the troughs along the street, and of course, the beautiful hanging plants, not just at the Green, but also on Main Street. And last year, we started the large containers with the Alberta spruces. You might see those dispersed throughout town. Some of them have annuals in them. Um, others have a few perennials coming. So we're very excited about that. That has continued, and we repurpose and recycle everything that we do. Also, if you notice the center of town, what a difference. That beautiful yellow median with all the marigolds. So when you're stuck in traffic waiting to get underneath the viaduct, you can celebrate the beauty around you. So I would like Public Works right now to come up and receive their award. <laughs> You know, so often in life, whether it's on television or uh, any form of media, we always hear the negative about everything. We never remember the positive. So tonight is all about the positive. We are celebrating the accomplishments of each and every one of you. You've all made a tremendous difference. Thank you. Thank you. Next, I don't see Maya Cabrera from Cebus. Are you there? Oh. oh, I'm so excited because we nominated Cebus One on Main Street and on, Bur on uh, Bird's Eye Street. We were so excited, and that small, small restaurant, she utilized every little space, and seasonally we would go inside, and she had decorations for all the holidays. Now... She continued that into the center of town with the Cebus Dos, am I pronouncing it correctly? She took an area that was really covered with all kinds of debris. She turned it into a virtual garden. I made myself a list because when I walked through there, I thought, I will never remember everything that was planted. And that was just for your, when you park your car, that's the first thing you see. So imagine, most of us eat with our eyes, but before you even get to do that, you are parking in a beautiful area, not even knowing that right next to you is the highway. So when you walk in, you see the New Guinea impatience, red, white, and blue, red and white. You see uh, frost fire, euphorbia, and that's a beautiful white sparkling plant. You see uh, an azalea bush. You see a lot of boxwoods. You will see geraniums blooming. It is just amazing. It, to the transformation of the area, if you remember the before and after, if you've ever looked to the left as you're going underneath the viaduct, it is just amazing. And that's just where you're parking. Then you turn the corner to go to the entrance, and there you have a beautiful perimeter of boxwoods. Around the trees, she also planted New Guinea impatience. She has some roses, and she has a mandevilla growing at the same time on the side to add color a little pop right before you go in to taste all the delicacies that she has to offer. So it is our pleasure to have Maya come up with her family as a tremendous role model for all of us because you take an area that no one else would ever think of doing anything with and you turn it into something absolutely beautiful. 
we look forward to seeing what you do with it for the rest of the year as well. So please come up and thank you for all your efforts. And now it's my pleasure to introduce one of our members, Janice. I'm a lot taller than Christine. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Uh, this award is our Manicured to Perfection Award, and um, this goes to 85 Florence Street. This gorgeous home uh, is owned by Barbara Mandel. Uh, our own Donna Caserta, co-chair, actually nominated this property. <laughs> She's right over there. Um, for its eye-catching design and well-manicured landscaping, you cannot drive uh, by without doing a double take. And uh, on behalf of the Beautification Committee, we want to thank you for taking pride in your property and helping to make Stratford more beautiful. Would Barbara come up? <laughs> oh, this one, yes. So this award is called our uh, Best Hidden Treasure. And uh, the award goes to 40 Beardsley Avenue. Uh, this charming house is owned and cared for by Joseph Bucky. I think I'm saying it right. Uh, interesting fact is that I think it was three of us who actually nominated this property. <laughs> like it really, really stands out when you're driving by, and um, you know it's a little bit tucked in. So as you're passing, you you literally want to hit your brake and do a double take. Like whoa, what you know compared to everything else on that road, it really stands out. Um, the use of color. And uh, you know the vibrant colors in the garden. So the ho the house is purple with really really crisp white. Um, what do you call that? Mold trim. Yeah. And so that combined with you know the really vibrant garden really makes it pop. And um, it's very exciting to see that uh, as you're driving by. Um, it's a treat for your eyes, and uh, you really should drive by and take a look for yourself because this doesn't do it justice. So, uh, will Mr. Bucky? Is he here? Come up. No? Aww. We'll accept it on their behalf. And in that case, I think you guys really, really should drive by and just do a take for that. <laughs> uh, the next award is our Best Use of Hillside Award. Um, and these photos also doesn't do that property enough justice, really. Um, the neighbors actually uh, came together and nominated this property. It's owned and cared for by the Micros. Um, uh, I guess feedback from the neighbors was, uh, normally you look at a property with a huge hill in front of it and you're thinking, oh my God, like that's a problem, right? You're not looking at it from the creative aspect and they were wowed by how the homeowners actually utilized the natural slope in their front yard and you know made it uh, something that people driving by actually appreciate and uh, you know it just beautified the neighborhood so um, these people we want to thank them for uh, making Stratford look beautiful. 
Uh, will the micros, are they here? Another one. Do a drive-by. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everyone. I'm Jen Riley Young. I've been with the committee for a couple of years, and I'm here to um, give you the, tell you about the next award. Uh, this is the Beautification Committee's next Curb Appeal Award goes to the Stars Gardening Club for their volunteer work at the Stratford Animal Shelter at 225 Beacon Point Road. We are calling your award appropriately Best in Show. <laughs> <laughs> So if anyone has ever visited the previous location for the animal shelter on Frog Pond Lane, then they can truly appreciate what the Garden Club established in 2018 has accomplished here at Beacon Point. There are pots of flowers throughout. You can see some on the right there. Um, and not the least being the Monarch Way Station, which is certified by Monarch Watch. There's milkweed, nectar, and water sources for the butterflies and other pollinators. On your way into the shelter to look for your new kitty cat or your new pet, enjoy, enjoy the honeysuckle arbor, the aster daisies, liatris, the orange butterfly flowers, and along the border lilies. Um, excuse me. All the plantings along with the cute garden rabbits and lambs set a friendly tone of beauty and generosity. Congratulations to the Gardening Club from STARS. And I think Karen Tracy is accepting this award. Come on up, ladies and gentlemen. The more the merrier. <laughs> According to Karen, the, the club has grown, um, the STARS group has grown to 50 plus people. And so um, it's, it's a wonderful thing. So we really thank you for the tremendous effort you've made. Karen, I'm going to have the mayor give you the award. Well, on, gonna, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Who wants to take the award? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. And the committee plans on giving you some extra da daffodils to put in this October, so that pops up in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited. Today's the winning, winning day. <laughs> so next, the Beautification Curb Appeal Award for the Most Artistic Vision goes to 100 Red Coach Drive. The recipients are Glenn McGarvey and Sydney Vasquez. I really like this nomination. The unusual design and overall feel of the property is simple, artistic, and beautiful. This home sits nicely atop a, a dead-end road, and the backdrop for the front yard's plantings is a mix of facades with brick to the left and siding to the right of the front door entrance, so it's different. It's a little asymmetrical. There are pops of pretty pink color in the rose bushes off of the driveway, there are dramatic decorative grasses popping up behind the expressive garden sculptures of water birds. The variegated leaves of hosta under a huge tree offer a really nice contrast. All of the garden, including the bushes and trees, have this 
same vision of asymmetry, contrast, and texture and color, and simplicity and beauty. This ama the amazing balance and flow are what makes it artistic. Congratulations. Are you here? No, no. Glenn and Sydney. Beautiful work. Thank you. I love it. A lot of work. It's about an hour. Please accept the award. Yep. Okay, two. Wait, 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 wait. We want to make sure we have daffodils. Thanks, guys. Next up is one of our committee members, Patricia. Good evening, I'm Patricia. I'm only gonna give you my first name because you'll never remember the whole thing and why not, like Cher and some of the other stars. Okay, um, 91 Winton, this is kind of a, like a little secret place that really nobody knows is there. The location is incredible. It uh, abuts the first green of the Mill River Country Club and provides the owners with a peaceful backyard. And normally we don't mention backyards, but this one, I have to say, the owners have turned it into a wonderland for their grandchildren. Um, with a pool and an acting stage and a little playhouse that the owner has built himself. Now, toward the front of the house, we have hanging baskets, which add up a pop of color. There are two chairs that beckon one to sit and survey the scenery. Even the wood pile to the left of the door is strategically staxed and arranged to look decorative. I don't know if you ever burn stuff in the fireplace, but it looks great. The walkway leads to a red front door to accentuate the gray siding with white trim. And there are dwarf boxwoods which line the front along the porch and hide the, the lower foundation area as well. A Japanese lace leaf maple, dwarf rhododendron, and holly bushes add to the New England charm. Well done, Bruce and Debbie Hawley. You're here. Congratulations. This place looks great. Good to see you again. Thank you. Yeah, good job. One fifteen Perry Lane. I don't know if you guys probably don't even know it's there. It was built up about, oh, I would say 16, 17 years ago off of Nichols Ave. This property is immaculate. The lawn rivals the finest golf courses. The doorbell is even a surprise. I went to push the bell and it's in the shape of a lighthouse. There are four tree hydrangeas and yellow and orange marigolds at the end of the driveway which fr frame the shed with the cupola that is visible toward the back. They didn't hide this shed away. They made it a part of the overall uh, theme of their, their whole entire property. I love it. Um, there are container plants of petunias and bocapa guarding the entrance to the garage. There are succulents, pink hydrangea, and rows of hydrangea along the front porch. Hanging pots of pink petunias and bocapa hang from the ceiling of the front porch as well. Alberta spruce is to one side of the stair, while a large pear tree provides some shade at the front. A smaller magnolia and katsura trees also reside in the front of the house. Rose of Sharon, a sizable roadie, and some allium sit to the right of, front of the front door. The hibiscus in the blue pot spends the winter in the basement and then emerges in the spring to decorate the front porch. Even the mailbox is decorated with a tall pink Asian lily, roses and Alberta spruce and some azalea. Jim does the work and Yvette cheers him on and provides the iced tea. 
Well done. Jim, are you here? Come on up. <laughs> if you ever wanted your front walk to be outstanding, line it with some river stones. It honestly does look like a river meandering toward the front door and makes this a very special entrance way. That's why we call it um, uh, the most welcoming walkway. Where's my... What sets this property apart is it's right on the Housatonic River. That, that whole road goes parallel to the Housatonic River, so it is a very nautical place. Now, I didn't notice this when I first saw this house, but I think the place is being overtaken by gulls because there are two houses, this being one of them, where a gull sits on top of a pylon and says, hey, look at me. Of course, it's not real, but there it sits. To the left side of the house and hidden behind clumps of zebra grass are driftwood pylons strapped together to form a perch for an owl and, an, and a uh, seagull. Also in that area is a nice, big, tall American flag. Multiple forms of a stilby are included in the planting along with salvia, yellow day lilies, a red canna lily, a winged euonymus bush, and giant casta. And at the time when I was there the other day, I didn't know what that bush was. I had to come home and identify it in one of my books, but that's what it is, a euonymus, uh, winged euonymus, and I think it will turn brilliant red very shortly. To the right of the walk is a seasonal clump of red geraniums, yellow coreopsis, and more hosta. And at the front of the property, offering a lot of shade, is a large plum tree surrounded by giant hosta and dwarf lilies who really love their little place under the tree. So well done, the Wilcoxons. All right, this is the same street as you can tell. And I said the place is being overtaken by the gulls because they are along the, uh, the uh, Housatonic River. And this is what really attracted me. This loud and clear is the seagull on the pylon at the front door. The house was recently bought and was not occupied in July on the 22nd when I visited there. The owner was in the process of tearing out the front yard and redesigning the entire landscape. The focus is on the gull, and um, I, another thing that I found very attractive about this landscape is the use of the stones. They actually took the stones out of the, the land and used them for the front walk, as well as placing many of them within the landscape itself. The plantings include mature azalea along the foundation, sea grasses, autumn sedum, yucca plants, some flocks at each side of the garage, and a giant roadie by the door. A small lace-leaf maple and variegated euonymus were transplanted from the owner's previous house. Window boxes are filled with greenery only, but as I said, the owner hadn't moved in yet, so I'll bet by springtime next year, those window boxes are going to be full of, you know, colorful posies. The house clearly speaks of its river view location and the care the new owner is taking with the front yard. Congratulations, Tom Nyselwitz. Oh, how are you? 
I know. No. But he was doing all the work. He was doing all the work when I was there. He was digging up the yard and putting the plants in. So thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Donna Caserta. As you listen to Patricia and Christine talk, they said all these fancy names and all these wonderful plants and everything. And when I came on this committee, I was very honest with them and I said, the only thing I know about plants is daffodils and dandelions are both yellow. <laughs> Trust me, I still don't know the fancy names of all of the plants and all of the things, but working with these two master gardeners, it makes your head spin, really. So I am not going to go into what kind of plant, because I don't know what they are. I just think they look pretty. This, this condo in, on Narragansett Lane was nominated by a neighbor. It is an amazing feat of landscaping. Unfortunately, the pictures do not do it. You don't get the total depth of the color and the the whole dimension of it, because it goes on and on and on, all around the, the stone wall. The retaining wall is the perfect frame for this masterpiece. The use of the different heights of the trees and the bushes adds depth to the overall effect. <clears throat> then there's a blast of color everywhere with many different varieties of flowers. This property was nominated by a neighbor who said she walks every day for health reasons and, and how she loves walking by this garden. I can just feel my blood pressure reducing as I look at this picture. Thank you to Ms. Thompson for bringing such beauty to our little space on this world, her space in the world. Is she here? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Wrong one. It's the wrong, wrong house. Go to, you have the wrong, it's the wrong house. That's it, but the wrong address. <laughs> That's okay. This is, this is 957 Huntington Road, owned by um, Jack and Kim Sheehan. It's down the street. The address is wrong on the thing. That's all. Um, this, this house looks so proud sitting on its little knoll. The front yard is not very big, but is landscaped beautifully. <coughs> right, you got the right, it's the right thing, small, use of small space. It's just the number, and the people. <laughs> <laughs> the, plan, the planting in front of the walls are the perfect height and make beautiful color and add beautiful color, color to complement the stone wall without covering it up. The well-maintained stone wall adds feeling to the height of the overall effect. The gradual increase in height of the plant as they get closer to the house, I feel, gives the illusion of more depth to the yard. This property is a perfect, perfect example of how the best, you can make the best use of small space. Thank you, Jack and Kim Sheehan, for making our town more attractive. <laughs> Sorry about the confusion. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Okay, now this one is really 1105 Huntington Road. <laughs> And it is neat as a pin, and this is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Gallo. I walk by this house or drive by this house at least once a day. This house has, has drawn my attention every year. It is just absolutely adorable. It is a cute little cape, and it is always neat as a pin. I think this soothes my OCD a little bit because everything is just, it's just so perfectly neat and organized and everything. Um, the uniform color and size of the flowers make it pleasing to the eye. The well-trimmed bushes along both sides of the property add to the overall look of neatness, and the lilies and the roses along the driveway really catch your eye. The front walk made of paving stones and lined perfectly with Belgian blocks is also so welcoming. The decorative fence on top of the stone wall adds a very nice little touch. You can tell that this is a well-loved home and there is much pride in the ownership. Thank you for making our town a little nicer with your beautiful, neat yard. Congratulations, Mr. and Mrs. Gallo. Our next house is 516 Windsor Ave. I just love this house. I think it just says to you, come on in. It's just so welcoming and it's just so adorable. Nothing says welcome home more than a white picket fence. And to the arbor of the, above the Fieldstone walkway is just a great little accent. Now let's walk down the flowers. Talk about the flowers. The garden, they're everywhere and they're beautifully cared for. The stone path that runs along the side of the house makes you want to slow down, take a little stroll, and enjoy the beautiful garden on both sides of the path. And the window boxes are the perfect finishing touch. This is truly a welcoming home. Congratulations, Vivian Lonsberry. It's beautiful. It's adorable. Laura? Laura? Good evening, everyone. I am Laura Dancho. I am the council representative on this committee, and I love gardening and wish I had more time to do it myself so I can really appreciate a garden such as this best wraparound garden on a 573A North Trail. This is literally like walking into a bouquet. It's just really beautiful. I can't name all the flowers in there because I think we'd be here for about an hour. Um, so it's just a beautiful welcoming area into the condo complex. It's right on the main street, so everyone gets to enjoy this beautiful, well-manicured garden, and I wish that was my front door. It's really gorgeous. So congratulations to Kathleen Flynn. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening. 
I'm here to present the award for to 60 Birch Place, which is owned by Ralph and Dina, Nina, I'm sorry, I'm making mistakes again, Damasi, and it's located on a corner lot. There are challenges to landscaping corner lots. People can see the house on the corner from two sides instead of just one. The main focal point is the beautiful lone st low stone wall that wraps around the property. The landscaping design consists of hydrangeas, rose bushes, and shrubbery, which flow from the front of the house along the sides with colorful annuals and perennials mixed in. There are separate planting areas containing trees and shrubs and a border of abravites at the back of the property. The overlook of the property is a major attraction in the neighborhood. Would Ralph and Nina please come up and accept your reward? Our last award goes to the property owned by Mark and Dan Dan Danielle Wright, and it's literally a ray of sunshine. This house is yellow, and it sits at 431 Ave uh, Windsor Avenue and is a definition of curb appeal. There's an abundance of brightly colored annuals and perennials, which start at the planting strip at the curb and continue to the back of the property, which is separated by a white picket fence and archway. The brick sidewalk and welcoming entry, entryway are surrounded by hanging and potted plants. There are mature shrubs on the property, which from what I understand from speaking with Danielle, that are maintained by Mark. I had the opportunity to speak with Danielle and she told me she tries to spend time each day on the property, maintaining the plantings in hopes that other people are inspired by her and Mark's efforts. We want to thank Mark and Danielle for demonstrating excellent care of their property and for helping to beautify Stratford. Please come up. I know that when you're planning your winner's reunion, you know where you're going, right? Right to see this. You get together at the end of the year, have a big celebration, winners all. Perfect place, just keep that in mind. Just a little housekeeping for you. If you would like a box for your award, we have them here for you. Also, you notice that all the homes are so different. Some are small, some are simple, some are over the top. We try to identify places, homes in all the different districts. So you have a good collection, a tapestry of what our town looks like, and everybody is really making an effort to beautify it. So we thank you all for coming. We invite you for a light celebration. For, well, you have to see the cupcakes. So Laura, could you hold those up? They are our town flower, the daffodil. You must see that. It's just unbelievable. So thank you for coming. Remember next year, look around town, nominate people, and consider joining a committee. We do good work. Thank you again on behalf of all of our members. Thank you.